segue onto the kind of next area I'd like to talk about, which is autophagy and aging. So autophagy, I think, decreases with age, but that's a, that's a very kind of general statement. So how, can you talk about how does autophagy change with age and does it affect the different types of autophagy? Yeah, so, so that's actually one of the main topics that we are heavily invested because, you know, to know why something doesn't work as you age, we have spent a lot of years trying to understand how does it normally work. And, you know, if you want to fix something, you have to know what is not working. So you need to understand their functioning. So something that we have learned with the years is that autophagy, as you say, malfunction with age. In most cases, as you point out, there is a decrease in autophagy activity. And I can discuss then a little, what are the different mechanisms. But sometimes what you lose is the ability to regulate it. So basically, there are particular conditions that you need to activate autophagy a bit more to accommodate to any stress. And that's what is lost with aging. So you might still have some basal levels of cleaning, but you cannot do the extra mile. And that really depends on the cell type. So different cell types get autophagy affected at different times in life and also depends on the type of autophagy. So to follow with the chaperone mediated autophagy theme, in that case, we know that it's always a decrease of function and it's very universal. I mean, we have not only in different cells in the body, but going from mice to humans, we can see this decrease on CMA activity with age. So that's one of the reasons why we are particularly interested in that pathway because intervention wise, I think it will be easier to tackle that pathway because it always changes in the same direction and it's quite universal. Meanwhile, other forms of autophagy have a, you know, different variations. It might be more at the regulatory level rather than the total activity. And we are still investigating some of these other mechanisms. But I think with CMA, with chaperone mediated autophagy, we are getting closer to understand why it doesn't work. Okay, okay that, that was going to, be, going to be my question. I mean, do we understand yeah, why autophagy is, is going down? I mean, is there yeah, some underlying yeah. mechanism? So in the case of chaperone mediated autophagy, again, I mean, I'm doing something that we should never do in science that is generalizing, right? Oh, okay. It always happened this way. Of oh, course, oh, there yeah. are exceptions, but you know, the common thing here is that the receptors, so I mentioned that you have your chaperone, the chaperone identified the protein that needs to be degraded and it bring it to the lysosomes. And in the lysosome, you kind of have a receptor, kind of an antenna there that is where the chaperone docks and pass the protein inside. So that particular antenna that is called LAM2A um, is what decreases with age. So what we have found is that as you get old, normally, you know, like any other component inside the cell, you have to renew also your lysosomes. And this particular protein is normally renewed in a young person every three days. So every three days you have a new LAM2A and a new lysosome uh, working. What happened in aging is that this protein is lost in 10 hours. So the rest of the time until you have the new wave of receptor, you are not gonna have this receptor. You are not gonna have this antenna. And we are still interested right now in trying to understand why that protein cannot stay in the lysosomes and be functional longer when mm. you get old. And so far, it seems like it's really related with the lipid composition of this membrane. And we got into that and the first hint is because we realized that as I mentioned, the levels of this receptor decrease with age. And when I gave talks, you can see the young people saying, ah, oh, I have plenty of time, right? I'm very young. <laughs> But what I show them is that if you put a mouse in a McDonald's diet, like high fat diet, mm -hmm. this young mouse in three months become as bad as a very, very old mouse regarding autophagy. So basically nutrition, and we probably will talk about that a bit later too, the, the amount of lipids that you have, the amount of sugars are gonna modify your lysosomal environment. So your receptor that was supposed to last for three days now it only lasts for like 10 hours because it's not in the right lysosomal environment. And so far we think that the membrane composition is a big player on that. Interesting. Okay, so actually I would like to talk about that a little bit now. So 
high fat, so, we, so I've seen this, we, we, we say we put um, mice on high fat diet. Um, is it also, because they're bad mm -hmm. fats? I, I, I mean, I know you're not a nutritionist, but uh, like is, <laughs> Is a keto is 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 high fat necessarily bad? I guess is what I'm. Do you know? So if, if I have to choose, I think I'd rather have high fat than high carbohydrates, especially refined sugars, because right. we have seen that sugars are particularly toxic for the autophagy system. I mean, both things. When you have high fat and when you have sugars, the, your cells respond by increasing autophagy. It's like okay, let's burn all these energy and i mean all these sugars so rather than getting a store in the form of fat inside your cell you know autophagy helps to 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 use it and produce energy but unfortunately once you pass a threshold and it can be either very high levels in a short time or moderate levels for a very prolonged period of time moderate high uh, for a long period of time both of them are detrimental for the lysosomal and autophagy system so the mechanism that normally defend you against these nutritional challenges becomes the victim once you pass some, some levels. Okay, thank you. So yeah, we may, may come back to that if we have time. Um, sen senescent cells, so mm -hmm. autophagy and senescent cells. So, so uh, are they related? So uh, as a cell gets older, right, th then it stops. Eventually it goes to apoptosis or it goes to senescence or it becomes cancerous, right? So is, is the level of autophagy within the cell kind of related to how it behaves? Yeah, so, so it's actually a very hot topic because as you know, in the senescent field, they are still trained to figure out what types of senescence, when is it good, when is it bad. So the, the general idea, one of my very good friends who is an expert in senescence, that is Emmanuel Serrano. So, so the, the general idea right now is that senescence and autophagy and apoptosis are cellular responses to stress. And depending mm -hmm. on the type of stress or damage that you have, you will activate one or the other. So in most cases, Senescence is a good thing. And actually your, your cells use it for wound healing. When you have a, any kind of damage, the cells around the, the wound, they will become senescent as a way to call the immune system to do the cleaning. And eventually, you know, they, they will be reversed and, and you end with the senescent process. The problem in aging is that this process that was supposed to be very transient, something that, you know, cells become senescent, then they disappear they do not disappear. And we have some collaboration studies showing that the level of autophagy that those cells have when they engage into senescence, so you don't need autophagy to engage into senescence, but the level of autophagy that those cells have will determine whether or not you have a clean resolution of senescence, or these cells will hang around for a long period of time with the associated toxicity. As you know, senescent mm -hmm. cells are going to release all these secretory products that propagate the, the senescent signature. So, so really the idea is that for a young person that might have very good robust autophagy, senescent is engaged and senescent is resolved and that's the end of your problem. In a, an older person that their autophagy might not be so good, senescent is still engaged, but then you cannot resolve. So those cells hang around for a long time and they contribute to part of the phenotype of aging and also malignant transformation, as you know. Right. So I didn't think about it because I, I always thought of senescent cells as being, I guess, like dormant, apart from secreting horrible things. But so do senescent cells still have autophagy within them? Oh, yeah. And, and yes. it's, it's really shocking. I mean, we, we haven't published this study, but we are wrapping it out the levels of autophagy that they have is, is really, really high. I mean, if it's a successful uh, senescence, so, so everybody thinks that they are dormant, but they are not metabolically, they are so active. I mean, to, to do that secretion, the amount of energy and the amount of amino acids that the senescent cell needs to secrete all that material continuously is tremendous. So of course they use part of this energy, they get it through autophagy, through the grading. And you also need very good quality control because if you will be producing so many proteins and you know 20% are not properly done because you know there is always some failure, 
if they will not have a cleaning system very powerful, they, they will really become overwhelmed and they will die. So the senescent cells use autophagy to, to be able to sustain this very high secretion and also to be able to maintain the cell clean inside so it can continue. In a normal healthy situation, that's a good thing because you want to secrete many of these components to call the immune system and to do the cleaning, for example, of the wound or to take care of the placenta. That is a process that is also physiological senescent. So you want this release of material. Unfortunately, as you get old, because your autophagy is not so great, these cells start accumulating abnormal products. So even their secretion material is quite different than in a young, healthy senescent cell. Interesting. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.